My husband and I were at the supermarket, and our baby was being especially fussy, so we took her for a quick drive, the motion of which usually calms her down. It only took about ten minutes to settle her, and I was still in the store, but unsure how much longer I'd be in, and there's poor cell reception inside. So he pulled back into the parking lot to wait for me. It was an unseasonably nice day, so we took her in her car seat to sit on one of the benches outside of the store. He took a business call and had just sat them down, absent-mindedly rocking the carrier, when a woman, well-dressed, mid-thirties and average height, approached them. It's not uncommon for people to ask to play with our baby. She's got big rosy cheeks, soft wisps of gold hair, and the most adorable gurgly toothless grin, especially when she's deep into a good nap. But her nap schedule is paramount, so my husband was preparing to tell the woman that she couldn't actually play with our baby right then. She walked over right in their direction, brimming with nonchalant confidence, and before he could even finish his sentence explaining that she was napping and not to be touched, she picked up the carrier and started walking off. He was in shock for a minute, not fully believing someone would be ballsy enough to do something so sinister in plain daylight, so he said, Excuse me, put her down, as his panic mounted. She remained calm this entire time, but when he called after her, she started walking away more briskly than what she'd approached. He ran full speed ahead, trying to grapple the carrier out of her hands, finally resulting to restraining her arms. The woman starts yelling, Help! He's trying to take my baby! Kidnapping! Call 911! Kicking him in the shin and pulling a pink bottle of pepper spray out of her handbag. Of course, no one in the parking lot was clocking the earlier reaction, and assumed immediately that he really was a kidnapper. A lone man in a Deadpool t-shirt versus a tiny, well-dressed woman. Immediately, a man knocked my husband to the ground and was holding him down. He could hear bystanders encouraging the woman to file a police report, but she was doing a very convincing job of acting shaken up and insisted she just wanted to get home. To make matters worse for my husband, she was driving a minivan. He was in a raw state of panic, realizing the entire parking lot had banded together to inadvertently facilitate the kidnapping of our daughter. He was begging and pleading with them, but nobody would listen. They just kept screaming at him that the jig was up, and he needed to lie still and wait for police and stop terrorizing a young mother. My husband finally had the novel idea to show them our family photos on his phone. But too panicked to think clearly, this manifested as him shouting, I have pictures of the baby on my phone. Of course, everyone interpreted this as him having either stalking photos or worse, pornographic images of the baby, I guess. It was at this point that a man, I can't entirely blame the man considering what he thought was going on, kicked my husband as hard as he could in the ribs. At this point I was coming out of the store, and thought that he was being robbed by these people. I was yelling for security, so panicked my chest constricted and I could barely get any sound out. It was only then that I realized he did not have our baby with him. When I saw she was being held by a woman, I was relieved. I thought maybe the woman had intervened to move my daughter out of harm's way while my husband was being robbed and was walking away to get help. I couldn't find a security guard outside the store, so I ran up to the people holding my husband down, waving my wallet and pleading, take everything you want, just let up and leave us alone. One of the men holding him down said something like, lady, we need to wait for the police to deal with him. I was so confused, why would the muggers have to call the police? I just kept stammering, what do you mean, what are you talking about? and made out someone saying, he tried to abduct that woman's kid. I didn't understand. I was sure I misheard him. My husband would never hurt a child, and we have four kids. If you were going to commit a crime, bringing home another kid would be at the bottom of his list. I kept trying to understand what they were all saying, and suddenly, it all clicked. I looked around for the woman who had the baby carrier, 
and she was already halfway across the parking lot. I went into total ballistic tiger cub mode, literally leapt out of my heels and sprinted across the parking lot. I'm not a UFC fighter or anything. I've never even taken a self-defense class, so all I could think to do was grab the woman by her hair and squeeze her throat with my other hand. It didn't do much. She was starting to get away even as I grappled with her. Amazingly, none of the other bystanders had yet to connect that my husband was telling the truth and this woman was absconding with my baby. I yanked on her hair as hard as I could, and that was enough to make her drop the carrier. I was so scared and surprised that I actually threw myself on top of the carrier, covering the entire thing like a blanket, and stayed that way without saying or doing anything else. The woman left. Not even one person tried to stop her, even though she was clearly leaving without the child she claimed was hers, which would be pretty damn incriminating if I'd watched the scene. Within the next couple of minutes, police had arrived. After that, there were still bystanders who exclaimed that my husband was trying to kidnap the baby. The police, to my horror, assumed that she must not have had bad intentions. The first questions they asked me after getting her description weren't investigative. They were questions thinly veiled trying to convince me not to pursue charges, still placing blame on my husband. A small sampling. Do your husband and the baby look dissimilar? Is there a chance she thought he was abducting the baby and was trying to intervene? Could your husband have been doing something inappropriate or violent to the baby that would make her feel compelled to extricate it from the situation? Did she seem groggy or confused? They spent more time verifying that the baby was actually mine than they concerned themselves with the fact that the baby was not actually hers. My husband had called his brother at that point who works in an office with a lot of lawyers and connected with one ASAP, who gave us the priceless advice to get every officer's name and badge number, to request copies of the store security tapes right away, and to escalate our complaint higher up the chain if these officers weren't taking us seriously. Finally, we had reason enough to believe that we were being taken seriously, and went home. We both just shook and cried until we had to get our other kids from school. My husband is seething with rage and grappling with a feeling of helplessness from how little he was able to do, and two cracked ribs from when the man kicked him. To the officer's credit, they did ask if he'd like to press charges, but considering the man was genuinely convinced he was stopping a kidnapping at that time, and stayed to talk to police and apologize profusely when the truth became clear, he declined to press charges. Amazingly and frustratingly, there were still people who stuck around to talk to the police, who were giving my husband dirty looks, and one man even implored the police to involve CPS to verify it was really our baby. This past Monday, my co-workers and I returned to our hotel room from a day of work out in the field. Rebecca and I walked to our room and as we stood outside of them, I opened mine and saw someone in the bathroom. Hello? I said, but nobody answered. My first instinct was that it was a cleaning lady in there for some reason, and then I saw my bag with my clothes in her hands. I whispered to my coworker, there's a woman in my room. I had turned to the woman and asked, what are you doing with my stuff? It gets a little fuzzy here because I can't remember everything I said and what she said, but she kept mumbling about how her keys still worked, how it still worked and that's how she got in. I was in shock, and she was obviously very flustered at having been caught mid-robbery. She dropped my bags and fumbled around with her purse and a white plastic bag. By this time, my coworker was behind me watching all the insanity unfold. The woman was scrambling and walking towards the door, and I asked, What's in the bag? Thinking it was probably my stuff. It's just my things, it's just my things. I'll show you. And so she did. I looked and I didn't see anything of mine, and so, since I was obviously in shock at this time, I didn't try to stop her. I went into my room and found it had been ransacked. 
I took a quick look around to see if anything had been taken. All my electronics were still there. But then I went into the bathroom and saw my underwear, my bikini and my clothes shoved into my own bags randomly. Even my passport was shoved in there. I looked on the counter and saw that she had gotten into my medication. I'm not sure what was going through my head at the moment, other than that I wanted it back, so I ran out the door to go find her. I ran to the laundry room downstairs and out to the sides of the hotel. I, I didn't see her. I realized I was never going to find her. So my co-worker and I went down to the lobby to tell them what had happened, and then we called the police. We went back up to my room to wait, and I noticed there was a large metal bat on my bed, a little larger than one of those novelty wooden bats you can get at a baseball game, but there's also a flashlight on the end. She must have left it behind in her hurry. She also left behind a necklace that must have fallen out of her bag when she was scrambling with mine. I was mostly freaking out at this point, because I thought that she'd gotten away with my medication that I need. The police got there and took our statements, and looked around the room as well. One thing I noticed was that there were bits of drywall on the sink, and I pointed that out to the cops, but none of us really knew where it came from. We started looking at the door and the windows, to see if she had pried her way in somehow, but there was nothing. So we just kind of went with the idea that she had a spare key or something. Even though the hotel front desk was adamant, there was no way that could be. The officer that came brought two more officers back up, because they thought the woman might still be in the vicinity. But after our statements were taken, there was nothing else they could really do, so they left. I sat down to finally make some calls to tell people, and as I'm on the phone, I'm thinking about the drywall in the sink. It still didn't make sense to me. I'm on the phone and looking at the drywall, and the mirror on the wall right above it. And then it hit me. I got my co-worker and asked her to help me pull out the mirror along the wall. When we took the mirror down, there was a hole just big enough for a desperate junkie to squeeze through. I asked Brian and Rebecca if I should call the cops again to let them know what I found, and my boss said there's still two of them in the parking lot. I went down to tell them, and the female cop kind of rolled her eyes, but the young guy said, I'll come check it out. They both came back up, looked in the hall, and found a pillow, blankets, cigarettes, clothes, toothbrushes. This woman had been living in the wall behind my mirror for God knows how long. She had access to me and my room at all times. I know it might be hard to picture. There was a crawl space about two feet wide in between the two rows of rooms. One of the officers called the original officer to come back and take pictures of this. She explained to him what was going on, and all I could hear over the radio was, No fucking way. He comes back and takes pictures and is just as mind-blown as the rest of us. Obviously, we packed up and left immediately. What's even crazier that she'd probably been there a long time. The last time we stayed at this hotel, I would randomly smell cigarette smoke and assume someone was smoking in their bathroom and was traveling through the vents. But no, a junkie was smoking on the other side of my mirror. She had access to other rooms, too. The holes in the walls were from a renovation, and the hotel hadn't properly patched and just covered up with mirrors. She could have been hanging out in people's rooms when they were gone for all I know. Anyway, this was insane, and I'm taking a little time off. Hi, all. Happy New Year. I just want to start off by saying that everybody in the story is safe, but it was one of the closest calls I've ever had in my life, and I feel like I have to tell my story in order to raise awareness. I live in a major city in practically the pit of hell state. Born and raised here, I'm very familiar with my surroundings. I'm also aware to the fact that my city is one of the worst hubs for human trafficking, and living here can be very, very dangerous. Despite all this, I've taken pride in knowing that I do everything I can to remain as safe as possible. 
I've had close calls before, and consider myself an avid murderino. I'm pretty prepped. At the time, I had two stings of pepper spray, one in my jacket pocket and one velcroed to my desk at work. I also had two trusty pocket knives, one always on me and the other in my car door pocket. Oh, my taser never leaves my bag either. I avoid shady situations, and despite being a small lady, I know my stuff thanks to self-defense classes. My point is, I'm a very paranoid small chihuahua, and I still got into a scary situation. Anyway, on to the story. It's summer at this point, and hot as hell out. I've got a date with my favorite gal pal and I swing by her place to pick her up. She tells me she has a job interview to go to first, and I agree to go with her. No big deal. She's a sweet tiny thing from a small town in the Midwest, and very new to the city life. Damn the wild things that can happen here. As we drive into a different city, I ask her about the job. It's a modeling gig. Oh, cool, for who? I found an ad on Craigslist. It's just some sports clothes. The Craigslist thing sets a small, distant alarm off in my head, but I try to push it to the side. Where the heck are we going, anyway? When we pull up to a Starbucks a bit outside of the city, the alarm in my head becomes a little less faint. Relax, I tell myself. I've gone to legit job interviews at coffee shops before, and there's always been a good reason. We arrive first, late still, but end up waiting about 15 minutes. Kind of weird, but Cat's relieved we're not the rude ones when she gets a text saying he's here. I look around the Starbucks, and outside at the parking lot trying to figure out who this mystery man can be, when I notice a tall, well-dressed man step out of a black SUV. He smiles at us as he approaches, and I figure that's our guy. I could have sworn, though, that that SUV had been parked there for quite a while. I ask Kat if she wants me to step in line and grab her a drink, but she practically begs me to stay with her. Okay, I could do that, but I don't think it'd look very professional. I don't protest, though. The man named Jack leads us to an isolated table outside and doesn't say much about my presence other than that was okay for me to be there. I get on my phone and shoot a text to my fiancé, explaining where I was and what I was doing. He shoots back up, be careful, and I sit pretty to watch the show. Jack had this strange accent I couldn't place my finger on. Looking back, I'm not even sure it was real. He starts asking Kate the usual questions, and I notice she's absolutely bombing the interview. She doesn't have much experience, and didn't bother to bring a portfolio, but despite this, he doesn't seem to care. The alarm in my head is much louder than a whisper, but it completely blares when he asks if she's comfortable doing lingerie shoots as well. Dear sweet cat says she doesn't have an issue with it, but would prefer to mostly do sports-like clothing, like they had discussed earlier. She has to see some of his work, and he pulls up a lingerie Instagram, he holds it in front of her face and pulls it away immediately, and when she asked if there was more she'd be doing, he says, that was it, and hurries the conversation along. He says we need to go right now to his studio at a place he briefly mentioned the name of, to sign papers and get everything squared away. It has to be done today. He's not working tomorrow and his co-workers won't do it right. I absolutely hate everything about this. I'm trying to glare some sense into her, but nothing is getting through. Cat agrees, and he turns his attention to me. Do you want to be a part of this, too? I immediately know now that nothing about this is professional. I look down at my beat-up dogs in green cargo pants, a shirt that has flames and a slightly edgy logo on it, and can't help but scoff. That's not really my thing. I'm just the ride. He studies me for a second and then says we can all ride with him, directing his attention to Cat. No, I don't want to leave my car. We'll follow behind you. He looks offended that I butt in, but asks where we parked. Right in front of the store. I got it. 
I pull Kate to the jeep and we make sure to walk behind him. As soon as we get into the car, I lock the doors and try to keep from freaking out. We're not going. This doesn't feel right. What about the lingerie? Everything I say, she has an excuse for. We pull out of the parking lot and I follow Jack's SUV. But the whole time I'm trying to figure out how to get out of this. Kat doesn't like the lingerie thing, but this could be a door for her and she desperately needs the money. What if it is legit? He was alone anyways. You have your knife and spray, right? Of course I do, but I'm five foot two and this man's six foot three, and Jack could very well have friends. I don't want to possibly have to kill or be killed. I realize Cat is bad shit. We drive along as I try to talk to her, and we start driving out into the desert, in the middle of absolutely nowhere. There's a divider in the road that prevents U-turns, and I get an eerie feeling Jack knew to take us this way. I'm desperate at this point. I pull out my phone and snap a picture of Jack's SUV license plate. I upload it to Snapchat and Facebook, where friends can see it. Kat starts getting uncomfortable when she realizes just how far we've driven. The name of the place he mentioned springs back into my head, and I know it's familiar from somewhere. A commercial jingle of some sort. It's distant but catchy. It's a restaurant or a hotel or something. You wouldn't have a studio there. Please just look it up. She does. It's a casino. Unless this man has rented out a space, he wouldn't have a studio there. It's not consistent with the information he gave us at all. Kat is freaked out at this point. I tell her that this isn't uncommon, and he was trying to confuse us the entire time. Throughout the entire interview, she had a confused and hesitant look on her face, like this wasn't what she was promised or expecting at all. Cat finally agrees that we need to get out of there, and I start to breathe easy again. I notice that every five or so minutes, there's a break in the medians. It's a rough, quick stop and turn around, but it'll have to do. I do, and we absolutely gun it. Kate gets a call from Jack and at first she ignores it. I convince her to call back, and she gets nothing at all, like the number had blocked her. It didn't go through. I tell her to screenshot the Craigslist ad, but she can't find it anywhere. It's like every trace of Jack disappeared. We go back to her apartment, and I tell her she needs to report it now. She promises she will, but later she doesn't because she doesn't want her husband to know. He didn't even know she had this interview to begin with, and she didn't want him to know what happened. If I hadn't driven her, she would have gone alone without telling a soul, and who knows what would have happened. I tried not to scold her too badly, but I just reminded her that our city was very different and much more dangerous than where she's from. Sweet cat, I hope you're a little more awakened to the world, and I'm sorry for that. It's been a few months since we parted ways, and I'm still worried to death over all the oblivious crazy things you get into. Since the incident, I have three pepper sprays, one new one for the car, and a new pocket knife to carry around. I'm almost four months pregnant, and now finally ready to get out of this damn dangerous city. Please, please be safe out there. It's such a scary world. And be damn careful with Craigslist.